What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. You're getting a sneak peek into my stock portfolio and a sneak peek into my research on stocks. Today, we are looking at two stocks that are different than what we normally look at on the channel. I just did a video about special purpose acquisition companies. They're also called SPACs. They're also called blank check companies. If you're unfamiliar with these concepts or just wanna know more, please check out that video in the card description, all those things. But today, we're gonna move quickly and talk about SBE or Switchback Energy and RMG acquisition. And these are blank check companies that launched on the stock market with the sole purpose of merging with a company. The merger target for SBE is ChargePoint. The merger target for RMG is Romeo Power. Now, Bonnie commented asking me to please compare SBE and RMG. And so since she asked so nicely, I did my research and here we are. I really do read the comments because this isn't just a channel. This is a conversation. If you want this to grow, please hit that like button, turn it blue and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for that YouTube AI. I really hope that Bonnie and all of you out there watching have hit the subscribe button. So let's start with SBE and ChargePoint. I'm long ChargePoint stock. I have about 15 shares in my retirement account. Here is the full stock chart for SBE. Currently, they're sitting around $46. As you know, SPACs trade in this $10 range for a very long time until a deal is announced, and then they start jumping up if investors like the deal. And obviously, investors like this deal a lot. And there is a lot to like here. EVs are getting more and more popular, and ChargePoint is a leader in the space. ChargePoint sells charging station hardware, but also software. If you have an EV, you're going to need to charge it, and ChargePoint's app can probably help you. So you can see why they're up over 300% in just a few months. And this deal that ChargePoint has with Switchback Energy is valued at about $2.4 billion. And it'll give ChargePoint just under $500 million to continue to develop and advance its commercial and residential business. I highly recommend that you check out the investor presentation. You're gonna get a lot of useful information here and I'll link that as well. So like I mentioned, they sell the charging ports and they also have software. This chart shows you that ChargePoint's annual port sales directly correlate to the sale of electric vehicles. And we see some impact here from the worldwide health crisis, but they do expect electric vehicles to be about 10% of the market by 2026. And by that point, ChargePoint expects their revenue to be in the billions of dollars. This slide exemplifies their track record, where they started with just kind of being in the workplace to also servicing fleets and residential, and they've really scaled up from 2016 just being in the US and Canada to now being in several countries. And going forward, they expect to be in many more. And I've said before to take investor presentations with a grain of salt because they are trying to present themselves as best as possible. I noticed that they don't mention Tesla very much here, but what I like about this investor presentation is that a lot of this isn't based on the future. A lot of this is happening right now. 2020 is gonna have an impact on ChargePoint due to the worldwide health crisis and a little bit of a slowdown with EVs, but it is expected to accelerate. And last year in 2019, ChargePoint had revenue of $145 million. So again, they don't mention Tesla, but it is noteworthy that excluding Tesla, they have over 70% of the market. I did a video about Blink recently. They only have 8% of the market. So ChargePoint is miles ahead of their next competitor. I mean, if you just look from 2017 to 2019, they almost doubled. Obviously there's impact from the worldwide health crisis, but they're expected to more than double again in two years. But also remember I mentioned they brought in over $145 million in revenue in 2019. Well, they also lost $133 million. So they spent more than they brought in. But this is common for growth industries. And so some numbers that I'm looking out for with ChargePoint is their gross margin. I wanna see that improve like they expect it to. Because if their gross margin improves, then hopefully they won't be bringing in these huge losses. I wanna see what they report as a loss in 2020. And after the deal closes, how does it change their margin? Is this $500 million that they're getting from this deal gonna help them better their business in a way where they can get their margin up and become profitable? I'm long this stock at an average cost of around $13 or $14. I don't know if I would wanna buy more at 45, 46. I would wanna see what the final valuation is gonna be so that I can analyze their revenue, their price to sales, and the things that we normally cover on the channel. Okay. Let's move on to RMG acquisition that will soon be Romeo Power post-merger. Again, RMG traded around $10 for a long time until they announced their merger target. And as you can see, 
they've shot up to about $34 a share. Romeo Power designs and manufactures lithium ion battery modules and packs for commercial electric vehicles. So they're all about making these batteries with a greater energy density for trucks, buses, and heavy duty vehicles. They say their technology produces batteries that are lightweight, long range, and long lasting with shorter charge times, improved safety, and improved acceleration. They were founded in 2016 in California by Michael Patterson, and their CEO, Lionel Selwood Jr., paints a very rosy picture for such a young company. And you can see why people would be very excited about the potential here. Again, I highly recommend you check out the investor presentation and I'll link it. It's got a lot of good information that I think you'll find valuable, but it's definitely worth taking with, with a grain of salt because they're trying to present themselves as best as possible. In doing my research, I found a lot of articles and podcasts and YouTubers highlighting a lot of the good news that's coming out from this company. But also as I've been doing my research, I found some things that give me a little bit of pause. Republic Services keeps announcing that they're gonna increase their investment in Romeo Power. In fact, Tim Stewart, the COO of Republic Services will join the board of directors for Romeo Power. So that shows a deep relationship between these two companies. But as I was reading this article, I saw Nikola and Republic Services in collaboration on refuse trucks. So let's take a look at that. So Nikola and Republic had announced what they had described as a binding contract in August and Republic said they would buy as many as 5,000 trucks. They're trying to scale up. They're trying to go electric. They're committed to that and that's great. But obviously Republic Services didn't do enough research about Nikola planning an investment between one and two billion when now the CEO of Nikola, Trevor Milton, had to step down because they potentially lied about their technology. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. These are just my opinions. And it seems this is a bad look for Republic Services about who they choose to make deals with. And now that part of the Republic Services team is gonna be part of the team with Romeo Power, I don't know how well that bodes for Romeo Power. I would just say I need more information. And so speaking of huge deals, Romeo Power has another multi-year deal with Lion Electric, another company that's chomping at the bit to get into this battery technology. The contract is expected to generate $234 million in revenue for Romeo Power over a five-year period. And Lionel Selwood Jr., the CEO of Romeo Power, said this contract demonstrates increasing customer demand for our products, reinforces our ability to turn our pipeline into contract revenue. But I think that I want to focus on deliveries. Contracted revenue is nice, but when they can actually deliver those batteries, that's when I'll be a little more interested. We talked about ChargePoint. They don't just have contracted revenue, they have deliveries. Those charging ports are up. You can go to them right now. Even Lion Electric is not fully up and ready to go. They're actually going the SPAC route as well. They're trying to raise hundreds of millions of dollars and they hope to have a valuation in the billions. But definitely do your research it's nice that they landed a deal with Amazon, but it's only for 10 electric trucks. And apparently their manufacturing facility only produces 2,500 vehicles a year. So for Lion Electric to be making a $234 million deal, okay. I really hope it works out for them. And I hope it works out for Romeo Power as well. Speaking of actual revenue, Romeo Power's filings show that they just had a revenue of less than $4 million in the first half of 2020, paired with a net loss of almost $14 million. And the year before that, they had a revenue of about $2 million and they lost $38.5 million. I understand that it can take a lot of investment for this type of technology. I mean, for a semi truck to have a range of 900 miles with their battery i mean that's that's impressive stuff but it's also concerning to see them incinerating money like this and look how quickly they're expected to grow i mean they still have nicola on their investor presentation uh, i don't know about that but their joint venture with borg warner is a huge deal their strategic partnership with heritage is also a huge deal so if you have confidence in their management team, if you believe that contracted revenue will turn into deliveries, it could be a great investment. This stock is on my watch list and it's on my watch list for when the actual deliveries come. And hey, sometimes if you get in early enough, you'll make money e either way it goes. But for me personally, and with my investing strategy, I don't think it'll be too late once they actually start making more revenue. If they expect to be a multi-billion dollar company, I have time to wait until they actually start bringing in 50 million in revenue, 100 million in revenue. They don't have the 10 year track record like ChargePoint has, but they're trying to get actually a similar valuation as ChargePoint. So that, those are just some of the things that I think about when I'm investing. With my investment strategy, I can be very patient. And I'm personally gonna wait on Romeo Power and I'm already invested in ChargePoint. And I'm long line electric SPAC as well. With any SPAC, it's good to have a plan. When you would enter a stock, 
when you would get out and at what price and valuation. But if you want to share what you know about these companies, drop a comment. I'll try to respond. While you're there, hit that like button and please subscribe. It helps the channel grow and that helps me provide better content for you. That's a win-win and we like that here at the Wealth Investing Network. I'm not on social media, but you can send me an email at thewealthinvestingnetwork at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go get some sleep. I need to recharge. See you in the next video.